Looks like someone's in dire need of coffee. Hell yeah! Here you are. Thanks. This gonna hit the spot. You know, you're not like those other suits, Miss McPherson. You okay in my book. What do we have, the usual? Yeah, the same old shit. Anonymous phone call, no witnesses, and another dead girl. This one more banged up than the others. When I got here, I figured it was your perp's work, so I didn't bother reporting it to everyone. I, I just called Miller. Besides you, who got here first? Miller did, about ten minutes ago. Claire followed a few minutes later. Where's the crime scene? The crime scene is through the entrance, up the stairs and to your right. Miller will be the chicken shit leaning up against the fridge. Miss McPherson, be careful in there. I need a tetanus shot just looking at this place. So, are you the human popsicle yet? Can you believe this fucking weather? I mean, shit! It was 60 yesterday! And can you believe all this goddamn snow, too? Look at this shit! You know how hard it was getting here? Miller got here first, huh? Did he do it again? Yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, Claire is pissed as hell, too. She threw him out into the hallway. Well, okay. I guess I'll head up and see how Miller's doing. Okay, Agent McPherson. You watch yourself in there. Wow, you remind me of when I was at the academy. One day I decided to run the obstacle course after lunch. I lost everything, even my breakfast. It was a gruesome mash of pizza and French toast. If you're trying to help me, it's not working. Here you are. It might make things pass more... smoothly? Ooh, then again, maybe not. So what can you tell me? It's our guy's work, all right. The victim's in an old bathtub. She's stuck in ice. I couldn't see much. Thank God. So where's Claire? Old Indian saying, follow stench. Find little pale-faced fat woman. Christ, Miller. I'm really not in the mood. Sorry. She's in the bathroom. Follow the hallway to the end and it's the door to your left. She's working near the body. I think she needs you to take a look at the rest of the apartment. Here, take the camera. Claire doesn't want me around, so you're gonna have to take pictures, too. Wonderful. Miller, you're going to have to stop trying. You and dead bodies don't mix. I suggest you wait for us next time. We can't risk any more donut-contaminated crime scenes. Yes, I will, Agent McPherson. Oh, by the way, stop with the Agent McPherson, please. Just plain Victoria is fine, all right? We'll do, Victoria. Just out of morbid curiosity, where did the Martians land this time? I hurled in the toilet. Can we change the subject? Jeez, that would bring you to 2 and 0. Oh. Claire must be very happy right now. Actually, no, she isn't. I think she wants to kill me. She threatened to tie me to your 4x4 four four and drag me through the streets. Take it easy. See you in a bit. Lucy, you have some splaining to do. Blood. Probably belongs to the victim. Weird, a clean spot in such a messy place. Nice Christmas decorations.
It's Claire's briefcase. She carries her stuff around in that. Hello, Clarice. So, what's all the fuss about? Let's see. I have an idiot who throws up at a crime scene. I'm understaffed because I'm the only one crazy enough to work during the holidays. I'm freezing my butt off. The body is stuck in ice. And what else? This might actually help. Coffee? Yes, please. It's no wonder you were my best student. Oh, what can I do to help? Have a look around and gather any evidence that you can find. I've wasted enough time getting this body ready for the meat wagon. You know how they can get pissy. Anyway, I thought I saw some blood stains as I came in. You can start by collecting some of that and then look around for more. Remember, always take a picture before you collect something. To help you out, grab the forensic tools from my briefcase in what's left of the kitchen. Once you've collected the evidence, come and help me out in here. You do know I'm a field agent, right? I think this is a little out of my league. Vic McPherson is out of her league? This is a first? Where did that come from? I don't know. I think I need a vacation. Sweetie, you can't always catch them on the first three victims. I know, I know. Hey, maybe you should take it easy with Miller. Take it easy? This is the second time I have to go through his vomit to see if there's any evidence hidden in the pile. Take it easy? No, I don't think so. Thanks for helping out. My pleasure, Clarice. I'll stop that. Maybe I should start looking for clues. Not getting a sample by dipping my finger in it. I need a tool. Looks like our perp cleaned up after himself. Can't see anything in this sort of light. I can't use that here. I need a tool before I can use this properly. What the fuck? Looks like our perp cleaned up after himself. Thank 
Not getting a sample by dipping my finger in it. I need a tool. I need to take a picture before I take samples. Bingo, we've got hair and fiber samples. I can't use my hands to collect these. I can't use my hands to collect these. I don't need to do this again. Okay, all done and neatly packed. Great. Thanks a lot, sweetie. So, what's next? I need some shots of the body before we move things around and disrupt the original crime scene. Okay. So what can you tell me so far? Not much right now. Probably like the other four. Cause of death is drowning, but I'll make it official after the autopsy. She was stabbed numerous times and she was eviscerated. Nothing indicates a struggle or resistance on the part of the victim. My guess is she was unconscious during the stage of the assault. Can you walk me through what happened here? Not now. I'd rather do preliminary lab work first and also analyze the evidence you picked up. I'll give you a briefing when I finish a few tests. Okay. I think you can remove the cloth from her face now. Aw, oh, you spoil me. Oh my god, look at the tattoo work on her skin. This girl liked pain. I have a feeling she's a pro. I don't know why. Just call it a hunch. Which would be a first according to the killer's MO and profile. I'll run the victim's name through the database to see if we hit something. What's her name? According to the ID in her purse, it's Cynthia Woods. Now can you take her picture without the rag on her face? Do you still need me here?
Not really. I just enjoy the company, but I can see you'd rather be somewhere else. Listen, I can handle things here on my own till the boys get here. Anyhow, you look tired as hell. Oh, thanks for letting me off the hook, but seriously, if you need me, I'll stay. It's fine, sweetie, really. You're not completely off the hook. I'll see you back at the morgue for my briefing. I wouldn't miss it for the world. See you soon. My god, she was badly beaten. I don't need to take another shot of this. It's Miller's Little Martians! I'm going to have to look for another way out of here. Okay, I'll wait here in case Claire decides to go down or someone tries to come up. Absolutely love what they've done here. The view is just super. Good idea. All I need now is something to pry these boards off. Looks like I'm going to have to do this the hard way. Man, that smarts. God, Miller, are you okay? <laughs> Do you think he's okay? Yeah. <laughs> he's fine.
God, it stinks in there. That's weird. My access code doesn't work. I never use mixed public washrooms. They're just too... icky. To find out who the gunman was behind the grassy knoll, please call 555-1963. Now that's tasteless. It won't open. I'll need a new access code. It's the evidence shoot. Why did you take so long getting here? You're the only one with a 4 by 4 Christ, I don't even want to go there. I mean, what is it with these idiots who buy 20 lottery tickets anyway? I mean, do they really have to waste everyone's time? God, they piss me off. I just wanted a pack of gum, too. Hey, last time I saw you, you were limping to your car. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just my ego. It got hurt more than me, I think. So what are you up to? I started the report. I figured you were too pooped to do it. You know, Miller, you do have your moments. Anything I can do to help with the report? Actually, yes. I need Claire's preliminary report to help me out. I'm not going down there. She might lock me up in one of the drawers and leave me there. Also, I need the pictures you took, so could you please drop the camera in the evidence chute in the hallway? Oh, I almost forgot. Is everything okay with your girlfriend? Oh yeah, forget about it. She knows now it's a big misunderstanding. But just don't answer my cell phone again, please. I promise. Well, okay, see you later. I have a message. Hello, Victoria. <clears throat> this is Todd. I heard about the fifth murder. I expect a full report on my desk tomorrow morning. Yes, you would. Wouldn't you? No, well, yes, I know, but... The boss's office. It's locked, of course. Yes, but... No. I thought that... Yes? A plastifier. This little machine can be very practical. No. 
This is used to lift fingerprints. Yes, I... This is used to lift fingerprints. No, well... Yes, I know, but... It's a paper cutter. Yes, but... No. I thought that... Yes. That won't work. I have no use for napkins. I never work without coffee. Of course, when it comes to this coffee, I'll make an exception. It's my boss's coffee mug. Should I...? Nah. Agent McPherson. Officer Tate? Agent Ashby wants to see you. She's waiting for you at the morgue. All right. So, how did you guys get the body down? Me and some of the forensic guys set up a ladder where the stairs fell. Oh, well, I hope no one got hurt. Nope, I know what y'all mean, though. That place was as stable as lemmings near a cliff. That's weird. My access code doesn't work. Hey Claire, get that preliminary lab work done? As a matter of fact, I'm not quite finished. However, I have enough to brief you on if you have the time. For you, always. Okay, here goes. The victim's blood revealed high levels of alcohol. Also, I found traces of rohypnol, which is also known as the date rape drug. This explains why there was no apparent struggle throughout the assault. The assault started in the first room where she was beaten. She probably fell when you found the spot of blood. She was then carried into the next room. The killer ripped off her clothes and beat her again. She definitely was unconscious at this point. He let her bleed on the floor until he had enough blood to write the messages you found using the luminol. The killer then cleaned off the messages. Obviously, he knew we would find them. He then dragged the victim by her hair along the hallway and stopped to hang up his coat. He finally brought her into the bathroom. The cause of death was drowning. He forced her head under the water until death ensued. Like the other victims, she was killed before the mutilations. She was stabbed nine times and then eviscerated from the lower sternum to the lower abdomen. What are you thinking? I'm thinking these mutilations will get worse. It wasn't part of his MO for the first three victims. They were found beaten and drowned, not like this. Do you think he'll change his MO in the near future? No, I don't think so. Drowning his victims seems to be his focus. That stage in the assault is very important to him. No, 
the stabbing business is from something else. I have a feeling that if we knew what it was, we would catch the son of a bitch. Also, he covered the face of the fourth victim and now this one. This strongly suggests that he knew the last two victims. I'll ask Miller to correlate the last two victims' info. How about you? Did you come up with anything interesting? Yes, I got a partial that doesn't belong to the victim. Very nice. Did you compare it to the partial you found from the fourth crime scene? No, not yet, but I'll let you know if I can compare them. After all, they are only partials. What about the stuff I found? Anything worth mentioning? We know that our killer has black hair, if it was he that hung his coat on the nail. It might have been a junkie for all we know, but it doesn't matter. We can use the hair for DNA comparison and place him at the scene of the crime. I sent the fibers to the FBI labs to see if they can find anything unusual or unique about them. I've been meaning to ask you, did you call her? Call? Oh, no, I didn't. I just don't have the courage. Can we not talk about this now? Sure, but promise me that you will call her. Okay, okay, I promise. Okay, sweetie, I'm out of here. Don't forget my beautifully handwritten report. It's on the table. I could see if I had some metachlorians in my blood. My god, that was weak. Hello? Hi, sweetheart. Hey, Dad. I just heard on the news. Another one? Yes, another one. Is everything okay with you? I'm okay. I'm just really tired of this case. It's going nowhere fast. I hate this passiveness. I think it's starting to get the better of me. Well, before that actually happens, why don't you come here and rest? A little R&R &R won't do you any harm. You can use the jacuzzi to relax and put your thoughts in order. And it's almost Christmas. I have a little gift for you. Oh, really? Well, I have the gift you wanted. Are you sure you want it? It seems a little ordinary. Hey, <laughs> it's what I wanted. So, are you coming to the house? Yeah, sure. Okay, honey. I'll see you soon. Dad? Yes, honey? Thanks. You're more than welcome. See you in a bit. Bye. Yes, I... No, well... Yes, I know, but... Here's Claire's report. Hey, Miller, one last thing. Can you correlate the data of the fourth victim and the fifth to see if we're overlooking something? Sure. I'll run them through the database. Thanks for the report. Yes, I... No, well... Yes, I know, but... Taking a breather? Yeah, it's the damn weather. It's depressing as hell. I need to gather more energy before I go back out there. You're still on patrol? Unfucking fortunately, yeah. Well, hang in there. I'll try.
Dad? I'm in here, sweetheart. Hi, Dad. Hi, Pumpkin. Are you sure about this gift? Yeah, gimme, gimme, gimme. Suit yourself, here you are. Thanks, sweetheart. You know me, I love these things. Now yours. Where did you get this? I thought we lost it. I found it when I was cleaning out the attic. Actually, it was inside your grandfather's chest. You should maybe take a look inside there. It'll take you back. I will. Thanks for the gift, Dad. I had a feeling you'd like it. Remember the stories he used to tell us? How can I forget? My favorite one was Paris, because of the occult twist he brought to it. Yours was the one in London, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, romantic and mysterious. There is one story he always avoided telling me, though. The one when he met Grandma. He never would talk about it. Was it not a fond memory? I'm sure it is, Pumpkin. But he could never talk about it. I think your grandfather lost someone close to him when he met your grandmother. And I guess it was too painful for him to recall. Where'd he meet Grandma? He met her in Prague, I believe. Speaking of your grandmother, this year, can you get around to making her special holiday cookies, please? I knew that was coming. Oh, they don't take long to make. I know, I'll make some, don't worry. Great, the stuff is already on the counter. What a surprise. I'm gonna have a look in the attic. Might bring back some good memories. Okay, sweetheart, I'll be in here. This might be helpful to get up into the attic. I don't know why, but I never liked that painting. Ah, yes, the trap door to the attic. I can't reach it. What was the trick to opening that thing again?
Prague, 1929. Two years had passed since the strange case in Paris. I figured I'd best leave town and come here. Quieter, or so I thought. The case in Paris had stirred my passion for PI work again. I had to let go of my dream of being an artist. It wasn't bringing in as much dough as being a private dick. In all, there were five dead and two unaccounted for. So far, all the victims were prostitutes. I didn't know if I would take the case. To my surprise, this cop Skalnik had no beef about me snooping around his crime scene. It's very nice of you to let me have a peek. I'm Gustav McPherson. I'm a... Yes, a private detective. I'm familiar with your work, Mr. McPherson. I had no idea I was so popular. I've read about your case in Paris and the one in London. I'm Inspector Skalnik of the Prague Police. Is this the fifth victim? Yes, she is officially. Supposedly, there are two missing. Supposedly? Yes, well, you know these women. They come and go, often without telling anyone. And then they show up again like they never left. So I don't bother with disappearances. So you only bother when they turn up like this? I see. We have a knight in shining armor. If you want my advice, Mr. McPherson, you'd best return to the usual missing person cases or husband cheating mysteries. This is a waste of your time. I think you've just convinced me to take the case. Really, Mr. McPherson? The press will not even cover this story. No one wants to know about dead prostitutes. If they do write about it, it will be about the killer and the number of bodies and not the actual victims. The pimps care even less. They force their women to work even if there is a killer loose. No one wants to sit at a dinner table and talk about this. There is no glory in this case. Like I said, you should stick with what you know. Do you mind if I ask you a few more questions? Not at all. Were all the victims prostitutes? Yes. Is the cause of death the necklace on her neck? Of course it is. So it's not the multiple stab wounds to her chest? No. Well, we aren't really sure. Does she have any other significant wounds on her body? Yes. She has scars on her forearms, and she is eviscerated. Eviscerated? I had never seen anything so horrible in my entire life. I'd only heard of horrors like this from the Ripper case in London. Oh my god. Were all the victims like this? Yes, they were all found like this. Are all the organs accounted for? I'm no doctor, Mr. McPherson. I have no idea. In the other cases, were there missing organs? Not that I'm aware of. Who's the coroner? Emil Corona. He works at the old chapel. He's very... Well, I don't want to ruin the surprise. Now it's your turn to share. Maybe you can tell me what you think happened. I think you're right about the cause of death. That slash across the neck was definitely it. The stabbings to her chest were done before the final blow to the throat. The defensive stab wounds on her arms reinforced this theory. What's bothering me, though, is the lack of blood at the crime scene. This probably indicates that she was murdered somewhere else, not here. Well, Mr. McPherson, I don't want to be rude, but... You have work to do, uh, of course. Thanks for sharing. It was nice meeting you. It was nice meeting you, too. I had a feeling that the cooperation between Skalnik and me had just ended. He was testing me for some reason. I was left to fend for myself. Kazimir Stasek. He's been a good source of info on a couple of minor cases I had here in the city. Hello, my friend. Ah, Mr. McPherson. And how are you this dark evening? 
I can't complain. And how's my favorite boy in blue? Besides my eye and this horrible murder, everything's fine. I imagine you don't have anything more to give me? This time I'm afraid I have nothing for you, my friend. Everyone is more or less at a loss. You don't mind if I ask you a couple of questions anyway? Of course not. How long has this been going on? It started about three weeks ago. You didn't hear about it until now? No, I wasn't in town. I just got back. I was working a case outside the city. Someone called me to see if I could come back and help. Ah, the very beautiful Miss Ida Skalikova, I presume? Good guess. She's worried for her friends. I told her I'd see what I could do. Can you tell me about your new boss? Inspector Yuri Skalnik. He was given the case and got temporarily assigned to this district. He has a good reputation, but he doesn't share much information with us. He keeps to himself a lot. What? He doesn't trust you? Honestly, I don't know. Maybe he thinks we're incompetent or something. Maybe. But he'd be stupid to think so. Why, thank you, my friend. Were all the victims' bodies dumped? Yeah, I believe so. But then again, I don't have much information, as I said earlier. Was there ever an eyewitness? Nope. Never. That's what bothered me the most. How was the killer getting around the city without being seen? How'd you get the Shiner? Shiner? Your black eye. How'd you get it? Oh, uh, I arrested a man last night and for some reason my eye hit this man's very large fist. Did you get sucker punched? Well, a little. My partner didn't have time to warn me. Everything happened so fast. I was helping the woman, and I turned around to see if my partner was okay, and wham! Next thing I knew, I was flat-faced on the sidewalk. And what did the man do to deserve your undivided attention? He was harassing a young woman. So I asked him to stop, and then things got out of hand. The police are trying to find this animal. We're a little nervous when a man harasses a young woman these days. That's understandable. Well, I should leave you to your work, and I have to see my client. Thanks for your input. You're welcome. Be careful. Will do. My Ida. The best gams in all of Eastern Europe. She's my angel and the love of my life. I met her on a small case I was working. She used to dance in the neighborhood cabaret. She was involved with the married man I was following. It was love at first sight. Hey, look at you all dolled up. Hi, sweetheart. I don't like it when you call me that. I didn't call you a doll. I said that you were... Never mind, I'm sorry. Good. Now have you talked to that useless inspector? Yes, I have and I didn't get much from the meeting. Are you going to help us? Of course I will. Was there really any doubt? No, but you never know. When do you want to settle this, now or later? No, I don't want money, Ida. Nonsense, you will accept our money. How much do you charge? Okay, listen, we'll settle this after the case, all right? Do you promise? Because we'll feel insulted if you don't accept our money. What was I supposed to do? Take money off these women? That's the last thing I wanted to do. Yes, I promise. I will charge you at the end of the case. Yeah, right. What was her name? Who? The victim's name? Oh, her name was Frantiska. Were you close to her? Not as much as Milena, but yes, I knew her. Did she ever talk about a regular client or someone special? Not that I know of. Do you think Milena can answer a few questions? I guess. Let me ask her. Milena? Yes? This is my friend, the one I told you about. He's here to help us catch the man responsible. Do you think he can ask you some questions about Frantiska? Okay. I'll wait for you up the stairs, okay? Okay. I'll see you in a bit. Hello, Milena. 
My name is Gus McPherson. I'm here to help stop this from ever happening again. I thank you, sir. Not a lot of people would help women like us. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about Francisca? No, that's fine. How long have you known Francisca? Well, I've known her for a long time. We met in the orphanage when we were just little girls. Her uh, parents had died in a terrible accident. We became very close. We both left the orphanage never to return. We never liked the sisters. Ever since we left, we tried to survive on the streets, even changing cities. But we kept coming back here. Did she ever talk about someone new or special? No. It was not her style. Francisca would rarely take new clients. She had regulars and enough to allow her to survive. She would only take complete strangers if she absolutely needed to. Apollina is more like that. She always has a new rich client. Did she ever have a client that had been violent with her? No. She only had clients she trusted. How about you? Have you had any trouble with any of your clients? No, I'm like Francisca. I have only regular clients. If I'm on the streets, it's because I'm keeping my friends company. Were you close to any of the other victims? Well, there is one that was a common friend to Francisca and me. Her name was Anezka. No one's found her. She just disappeared one day. We honestly don't know what happened to her. And I knew the others only on a professional level. Did Anezka ever complain about any clients before she disappeared? Or did she ever talk about leaving? Well, we all talk about leaving. Who wants to live their life like this? But she never complained about anything. Anezka was like Apollina. She took on many clients. She left town a lot, but always came back with a broken heart. I hope she did find someone and left this place. Where can I find this Apollina? She usually works the park. Rare are the girls who are allowed to enter it. She's very protective of her territory. That's what she calls it anyway. Francisca and me were allowed in because Apollina knew we didn't take strangers and pretty much had our own regulars. Anezka was Apollina's good friend, so she was allowed too. So we all kept each other company in the park. Maybe Apollina knows where Anezka is. I don't know. Well, thank you for answering my questions. It was a pleasure to meet you, even under these unfortunate circumstances. Well, it was nice to meet you, Mr. McPherson. I thank you for trying to help us. Trying? I haven't even started yet. If I have any more questions, how may I contact you? Usually in the park. Again, thank you. Ida's an angel on Earth. She's the sweetest person I've ever met. I truly believe she doesn't have an angry bone in her body, even with the difficult childhood she had. A stepfather who molested her on a regular basis. Ida is always positive, and she's always willing to help the people who surround her. That's why she hired me to try and help. She has an undying optimism about life in general, and I love her for it. Hey. How is she? She's okay, I guess, under the circumstances. I'll go talk to her after. Tell me, where can I find Emil Corona? Who's he? He's the coroner working the case. I need to ask him a few questions. Skalnik said he worked in an old chapel. Do you know where it is? Yes, I'll mark it on a map. I don't need a map. Just tell me where it is. What is it with men in directions? Take this map, it'll help you. I marked the location of the old chapel. It's not far from here. Okay. Thanks, sweetheart. How have you been? I mean, are you feeling better? Yes, a little. It's not as bad as when you left for your case. Did you go see the doctor? No. Ida, go see him. It might be serious. I'm no doctor, but throwing up every day is not normal. Go see him. Okay, okay, I'll go see him. I don't throw up every day, you know. You always exaggerate. Yes, okay. But go see him as soon as possible. Okay. I have to see this Corona. 
I want you to stay off the streets as much as possible. Never walk around alone. Yes, I know you've told me a hundred times. I am careful. Okay, I'll ease up on you. You be careful. I will. Now go. What are you doing here? Why aren't you at your post? Well, you told me to. Never mind. Do you have any news, at least? Yeah. The American is talking to the girl's boss. So, he thinks he can move in on my women, huh? Well, my friend, if you ever see him, you may explain things to him. Uh, explain what? Use that brute force of yours, you idiot! Aha, ha, 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 okay, boss. I truly miss your brother. He was the smart one. Yeah, I miss him too. Why can't we get him out? Because I'd probably get arrested too, you moron! That's all Skalnik wants anyways. I have a feeling he will blame me for all these murders. Why am I telling you this? Go back to your post. You see the American, you can rough him up. Okay, boss. I better steer clear of the big guy. The scrawny looking guy was probably Odokar Kubina. Who can forget that name? Anyways, he was the pimp of the neighborhood. He worked out of this little lingerie shop, which acted as a front, of course. He owned a couple of joints in the district, including the cabaret where Ida used to work. I think he never forgave me for stealing Ida from that dive. This place had the metallic smell of blood and the stench of rotting flesh. This old chapel had been converted into an autopsy room. Now blood dyed its floor. Hello, Mr. Corona. My name's Gus McPherson. I'm a detective that was hired to help my client. Hello? Sir? Hello? Huh? What the... What are you doing here? I thought I'd lock the door. Where is my cone? What are you trying to do? Give me a heart attack? Uh, sorry, Mr. Corona. Who are you and how do you know my name? Like I said earlier, I'm Detective McPherson. Inspector Skalnik told me that I could ask you a few questions. If Skalnik says it's okay, then it's okay. Can you walk me through your observations of this victim? Okay. Ah, the cause of death is like the others. The cut to the throat. It can't be the multiple stab wounds or the evisceration itself? No, I'm pretty sure of that. What makes you so sure? The one before her. The one we found in the park. She was killed in the same spot she was found. It was clear that it was the wound to her throat that killed her. The rest was probably done after. And how did you come to that conclusion? Because not much blood was coming from the other wounds. The heart was still beating when the throat was cut. I could tell by the amount of blood that had poured from the throat wound. So you weren't sure about the cause of death until you saw the victim in the park? Well, I had my doubts, but when I saw her, yes, she made things more clear. And the same killer would use the same brutal techniques? Precisely. Does the victim in the park have any other differences from the rest of the victims? Yes. The cut to her neck indicates an attack from behind. The rest, including this one, were attacked from the front. If only I had the other body, I could show you the difference. That's okay. Really, I trust your judgment. You don't have the body, but maybe you have a file on the victim from the park? Sure. The man who was supposed to come and get the file never showed up. What man? Skalnik's errand boy. He comes to get the files I make for each victim. He still hasn't come to get the one from the park. Ah, I see. Well, I'll take Inspector Skalnik's file, if you don't mind. 
No, I don't really care. Where do you keep your files? In my safe over there. I can never remember my combination, so I wrote it on a piece of paper. I, you know, I think I lost it somewhere. What happened to your hearing, if you don't mind my asking? It happened in the Great War. I was a medical aide. Now we get the wounded from the trenches to the temporary hospital. One day we saw a wounded soldier in no man's land. We rushed to him, and a mortar shell exploded on my partner. I survived, but with hardly any hearing left. So that's where you got your experience? Yeah, mostly. Ironically, the war ended three weeks after the shell exploded. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. These were installed recently. I hate this part of my job. She was the only victim that had been attacked on the spot in the park. Maybe the police had overlooked something. I had to go see for myself.
Stay away from women! Sorry, Mac. I like women too much. I woke up with a splitting headache. It wasn't the first time my smart-ass mouth got me in trouble. Why, hello there. Nice night for a walk, isn't it? It's a little too German expressionist for my taste, but I guess one could appreciate it. Need some company? You must be Apollina, right? Yes. You've heard of me. Do you know Inezka? Yes. Do you want both of us at the same time? Uh, do you know where she is? No, I haven't seen her in a while. When was the last time you saw her? Hey, do you want a Nesca or me? Are you a cop or something? If so, I'll be very disappointed. Not exactly. I'm a detective. I was hired by some of your friends. What friends? You must know Ida, Milena, and the late Francisca. Yes, I do. And they are most certainly not my friends. And you're not afraid for your own safety? I have all the protection I need from Roman. Don't you care that some people you know are dying? Actually, no. More business for me. We are just whores to the police anyway. Besides, I have all the protection I need from Roman. Now, would you kindly fuck off? You're scaring potential customers away. Sure, whatever. I don't see anything unusual. I like this statue. It reminds me of Ida.
Oh my, has my friend here stolen this from you? He has, yes. I cannot help but be embarrassed. You see, I taught him to retrieve shiny objects for me, and he does so remarkably well, don't you think? Yes, he does. Being a coachman in an industrialized world is not quite what it used to be. Who are you? On good days, as I mentioned earlier, I work as a coachman for the odd tourist or for the prostitutes who want to make their way through the city at a bargain price. On not-so-good days, my friend, whom you've already met, becomes a thief to help me make ends meet. On bad days, I'm merely reduced to being a homeless bum. So you know some of the prostitutes around here? Yes, I do. I've driven them here and there through the city streets. They hire me or their clients hire me, either because I'm cheaper than a taxi or they appreciate the rustic look. Do you know any personally? I knew one personally. On certain occasions we would exchange pleasantries, but most of the time I would just drive. She was very young to be doing what those animals wanted. Her name was Vladana. She was only sixteen years old. She was? Yes. I haven't seen her in a long time. I fear the worst. You said her name was Vladana. Are you sure it's not Inezka? Very sure. Vladana reminded me of a girl I once knew as a young man. You must surely know about the murders. Indeed I do. Anyone who lives in this district knows. That is why I fear for Vladana's well-being. May I ask you a few questions? Sure. Who are you, and why are you so interested in the local problems? I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Gus McPherson. I'm a private investigator hired by the prostitutes to help stop the murders. They are, for obvious reasons, worried about the situation and have no confidence in the police's competence. Admirable, Mr. McPherson. Admirable indeed. I have to admit that I have lost all hope in humanity. The things I have seen during my miserable life. You, Mr. McPherson, have restored my faith. Tell me, is it true? Is there a new one that washed up on the shore of the river? She didn't wash up. Never mind, that's not important. Unfortunately, yes, there is. Did you see her? Yes, I did. Don't worry, my friend. Her name wasn't Vladana. She was known as Frantiska. Thank you, Mr. McPherson. You've reassured me. You said that the body did not wash up on the shore. No, she didn't. She was, uh, forgive the expression, dumped there. How is this possible? There is only one way a man can travel throughout the city without being seen, Mr. McPherson. The sewers. Precisely. He is using them to move back and forth, limiting the possibility of witnesses. I've stumbled on a few underground passages in this city, but I never found any in this neck of the woods. Maybe you should start looking for some. It would certainly help you in your investigation. Have you talked to the police about your theory? Yes, I have. But who listens to a homeless bum? Especially not one who outwits the inspector. That Inspector Skullnick is quite a unique individual. Unique, huh? Is that Latin for asshole? <laughs> Where are you from, sir? If you don't mind my asking. I'm from all over Europe, it seems, sometimes. I usually don't stay in one spot for very long, but I've stayed here for a while now. My legs don't allow me to travel very far, I'm afraid. But to answer your question, I'm from London, England. Come now. You used to be a detective, or a cop even, right? I'm a simple coachman and wish to remain that. I ask you to no longer continue in this line of questioning. Please, out of genuine courtesy. Very well. Is there anything else you can tell me that might help me in my investigation? I'm afraid not, Mr. McPherson. Only that little theory of mine. I'm only a coachman trying to survive, and this little fellow helps me. Speaking of which, may I have that ring back? 
Dear me, of course. Thank you. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. It's quite all right. Gus? Ida, what are you doing here? I found something that might help you. Weren't you supposed to see the doctor? Ida, please don't do this. Do what? Help. Why can't I help you? Because it's dangerous. Don't you know there's a seriously deranged man roaming the streets, preying on women? Oh, I can handle myself. I don't doubt that for a second, but I'd like to know that you're somewhere safe so I can concentrate on the case and not worry about you. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, what have you found out? Oh, it's really good. I was asking a few questions of some of the women. Anyway, one of them admitted that she'd heard that one of the victims survived an attack and was hiding in the scrapyard. That's great. But how reliable is the source? I have to admit it's only a rumor, but isn't it worth taking a look? Yes, it is. Be careful. I will. Stay off the streets, but first go see the doctor. Yes, I will. I'll see you later. A and Ida? Yes? Thanks for the info. You're welcome, and I love you too. This reminds me of the Madison Avenue arsonist case I worked on. What kind of a moron parks there? Uh-oh. I'm out of here. Hey, Kubina, open up. We need to talk. What do you want? I'd like to ask you a few questions. About? First off, I'd like to clear the air between us. I'm not after your girls. I'm just trying to find the killer, and that's all. You expect me to believe that? Yes, I do. Well, I don't. Everyone wants something. Just stay out of my business, McPherson. Yes, I do want something from you, but it's not your girls. Hmm. I'm listening. Let's exchange favors. I'll do something for you so that you can see I'm on the level with you. In return, all you have to do is tell that ape that's working for you to leave me alone. Hmm. Actually, there is something you could do for me, McPherson. I thought so. The gorilla's brother is locked up, isn't he? 
Yes. Roman is a good resource and is the girl's main protection. Without him, let's just say, if you can spring him out of jail, I'll tell the gorilla to leave you alone. Why'd he get arrested? It was some sort of incident with the police. He supposedly punched one, I heard. So, we have a deal then? Wait, not so fast. Why do you want Peter off your back? I need to talk to the person he's protecting. Ah, Vladana? So she really exists? Yes, she does. Spring Roman from jail and I will let you talk to her. To be quite honest, I figured you'd be more difficult to convince. McPherson, we both win if you get this killer off the streets. When you catch him, business will return to normal. Now go! You're wasting time. Hello again, my friend. Ah, Mr. McPherson. What brings you here this fine evening? Well, I need a favor. Hmm. I thought so. What can I do to help? I need you to be on the level with me about the Shiner. What do you mean? Come on, Kaz. What really happened? Why do you ask? The man you arrested yesterday, is he the same man that protects Otakar's girls? Yeah, he is. I thought so. I need this man free, because I can get precious information on the case. Can you help me? Yeah, I can help you. But I'd have to ask a favor in return. I would have been insulted if you didn't ask. What can I do to help? Well, it's, uh, it's sort of embarrassing. You can trust me. It's about the black eye, isn't it? Yeah. The night I arrested Roman, I noticed something missing. My, uh, my medal was gone. You have a medal? Yeah, I got a medal for bravery. I saved some children from the fire that happened a couple of weeks ago. Atta boy. Congratulations. No, oh, thank you. Anyway, I noticed my medal was gone, so I went back to see Apollina. Why'd you go see her? Well, I, uh... Never mind, I got you. She stole it from me. I have no idea why. Maybe she needs the money. But I need that medal back. My wife is getting suspicious about it. It's my pride and joy. And saying I forgot it at the office just won't be good enough when I go home. Please, get it back for me. I love my wife and kids. I don't want to lose them over something so stupid. Relax, my friend. I got you covered. I'll get that medal of yours. Just make sure that you can free Roman for me when I return. Thank you, my friend. I'll see you later. Oh, you again. Stop wasting my time. Wait a second, will you? You are truly annoying. I have information for you. It's about Roman. Interested? What is it? First of all, you're gonna have to give me the medal you stole from Stasek. Why the hell would I want to do that? So you admit it. You did steal his medal. Yes, I did. That son of a bitch didn't pay me, so yeah, I stole his precious medal. Just because he's a cop, he can hump me and leave me without paying? Hell no, not me. Okay, so, what happened? He came to see me when he finally realized that I had it. He started grabbing me, and threatened to arrest me. 
Roman happened to be walking by and he broke up the commotion. He ordered me to go home, so I left. Well, let me finish the story for you. He got arrested for punching Stasik in the face. Now Roman is in jail. So, what do you want from me? I need that medal. Stasik is willing to let Roman out if I get his medal back. Get it? Of course I do. Okay, listen, everybody wins here. Roman gets out, Stasik gets his medal back, and you... And I get screwed for free. Look, I'll pay you what he owes you, okay? It's not the money. Here, just take the damn thing and get out of here. Good evening, Milena. Hello, Mr. McPherson. I'm glad to see you're feeling better. Thank you. If you don't mind me saying so, I really don't think you should be working right now. It's too dangerous. Well, I'm not working. I'm sort of keeping an eye on Apollina. If she leaves with a weirdo, I'll follow them. That's very kind of you. But how can you tell when a client is weird? Trust me, I can tell. Okay, well... I won't distract you any longer. It is a very lucky woman. Good evening, Miss Milena. Here you are, my friend, as promised. Ah. Oh. Thank you. How about your end of the deal? I'll be right back. Here you are, your new friend, Mr. McPherson. Who are you? Let's just say I know your boss. He's waiting for you at his shop. I'll meet you there later. Whoa, well, thanks for springing me, mister. You're welcome. Well, that concludes our agreement. Thanks a lot, Kaz. You're welcome. So, go tell your brother it's okay if McPherson goes to see her. Okay, boss. Well, McPherson, looks like you held up your end of our agreement. I'm sending Roman to talk to his brother, which will conclude my end of the deal. Thank you for getting me out of there. You're welcome. I'll see you soon. And now, I've just honored my part of the bargain. You may speak with Vladana any time. I misjudged you, Kabina. No, I don't think so. I have my reasons to protect this girl. Here. Before you leave, this might come in handy. Thanks. You sure you're not a nice guy after all? No, I'm not. Now get out of here. Come here, my friend! Okay. Please. Can't breathe. Let go of him, Peter! You're hurting him! I wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. Then just say thank you! Thank you. Again, you're welcome, my very large friend. Gustav, wait! I want to show you something. Stand here, and don't cross this line here. Oh, no, not this again. He always does this with the new guys. So don't move, okay? What's going on? Hey, guys, I just want to talk to the girl. He only likes raw meat. <laughs>
The crane seems to be locked. Two crates is just too heavy. I have to find a way to separate them. Not a good idea. Peter said it liked raw meat. These crates are chained together. I'll need something stronger than my teeth to cut through this.
there. I'm Gus McPherson, P.I. You must be Vladana. Hello? Hi, sweetie. Uh, am I bothering you? Not at all. I was just reading something, and I guess I really got into it. Do you want me to call you back? Really, it's okay. What's up? You don't sound too good. I called her. Oh, Samantha? Yes. I need to talk. I'll be right there. Where can I pick you up? At work. Just come down to the morgue. I still have a little work to do before we go. Okay, you take care. I'll see you soon. Bye. Hey, Dad. Hi, sweetheart. Did you ever read any of Grandad's memoirs? I've read some of them, yes. Did you find something interesting? Yes, I found his memoir from one of his cases. Oh, really? Which one? It's the one in Prague. Did you ever read that one, Dad? You know, sweetheart, some things are better kept buried. Dad, answer the question. No, I never read it. I asked him once about what happened in Prague, and I could tell it was a very painful memory, even though he did his best to hide it. After seeing his expression, I never wanted to know what happened there. Did you ever ask Grandma about it? No, I didn't bother either. Like I said before, some things are better left buried. Did you know about Grandma? Yes, I did. Where are you going with this? Dad, I wasn't judging. I just wanted to know if you knew. Weren't you going somewhere? Dad, I was going to meet Claire. Ah, Agent Claire Ashby. She's one of the best in her line of work. I always love it when she's on the stand. I hope everything is okay with her. Yes, she's just having a hard time talking to her daughter. I better get going, Dad. Okay, Pumpkin. Uh, Victoria, I'm sorry. No, Dad. I'm the one who should be sorry. I shouldn't have gone there. It's okay, sweetheart. Sometimes I forget. It's your job to ask questions. I'll be back soon. Okay, take care. It's locked. Damn, can't watch the Hawks game. What the? Sweetie! What the hell are you doing? Me? I thought you'd... Oh my god. Go look at the security cameras.
anyways. Hey. Hey, are you okay? What happened? Yeah, I'm okay. I ran after him. Son of a bitch got away. Well, the important thing is that you're okay. So, what happened on your end? I never thought my own lab would become a crime scene. The suspect left this, a photo of a young woman, and wrote NEXT on the back. I need to send this to the lab for further analysis. Where was it? He put it inside her. He tore the stitches open just below the sternum and slipped it inside. Do the others know? Yes, I called upstairs and Todd answered. I told him what I know. He's expecting you and he didn't sound too happy. I can imagine. Hey, about... Forget it. It can wait. Are you sure? Hey, Browning can wait. Really, sweetie. It's okay. Go. Okay, going upstairs to deal with Todd. Okay, I'll fix the mess down here. I'll tell you if anything turns up. Hello? Hi, honey. Oh, hi, Richard. You left the gallery in a rush and you never called back, so I got a little worried. Is everything okay? Oh, yes, I'm fine. I'm sorry about that. It's just we found another victim and some really weird stuff is going on. Oh, God. How are you holding up? I'm very tired. And I'm in dire need of unwinding, like we did two nights ago. True, that was very relaxing. I have an idea. Come down here, and I can show you the new exhibit, and after we can go unwind. Very tempting, but I have to decline. Aw, oh, why? Well, I have to go get yelled at by my boss. Anyways, why are you so excited about this exhibit? I've never seen you so into your work. Oh, it's because I sort of discovered this artist. Actually, it wasn't just me. Some people from the University of Chicago's Fine Arts Department helped a little. We discovered him at an auction. He's from L.A., but originally from Chicago. His name is Mark Ackerman. The department and I purchased most of his pieces, but we're still looking for some. Anyway, we got enough to make an exhibit. Richard, I'm sorry. I really have to go. Oh, sorry. You know how I get started. <laughs> yes, I do. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, honey. You be careful now. I will. Bye. Bye. Yes, I... No, well... Yes, I know, but... What the hell is going on? What's this I hear about suspects yes, breaking into the morgue? Agent McPherson and Detective Miller, I want to see you both in my office. Now! Yes. And while you're at it, one of you can get me a cup of coffee. Oh. 
Victoria, can you... Don't sweat it, Miller. I'll cover you. Anyways, you have the report to finish. I'll even get his damn coffee. Next on Chicago Vice, Agent McPherson gets the boss a coffee. Miller, don't make this any harder than it already is. By the way, I have some good news. Come and see me after. Can you give me a preview? It's about the data correlation. I think we might have something. You didn't tell... Uh... No, I wanted to check with you first. Okay, I'll see you after. Here's your coffee. Thank you. In what new way have I pissed you off this time? I distinctly remember asking for both you and Miller. Ugh, never mind. I just hope you haven't forgotten that he is your partner. No, I haven't. Okay. Now tell me what happened tonight. The perp entered, I assume, through the garage. Claire already filled me in. I want to know what happened outside. I pursued the perp with the 4 by 4 into the alleyway. He climbed up a fire escape to the rooftop. When I got up there, he gave me a surprise blow to the shoulder with a 2 by 4 He got away through the other fire escape. Shots fired? Yes, one. Any leads so far in the case? Besides what the next victim looks like? No, not really. We're not sure of that. Claire is running it through the database to see if we get a hit. Is that it? Because I'd like to get back to work now. Consider yourself on probation. What? Why? I've seen it before. Agents get too involved in their case and lose it. I'm losing it now? I think you're just pissed because we look like schmucks on the news. It's all about image, isn't it? No, this is about your recent behavior. I'm worried about the progress of the case and I think you need a break. This is bullshit. You're only proving my point. You know, Browning? I usually get kissed before I get fucked. So, is everything okay? Not really. I'm on probation and he'll probably take over the case. Aw, oh, crap. I'm sorry. It's okay. Been there, done that, and bought the t-shirt. What's this big lead you were telling me about? I did what you asked. I correlated the info on victims 4 and 5. I got something, but it may be nothing. Try me. You've said that the last two victims probably knew our perp because he covered their face. Well, I got a name that's common to both victims. A Vaklav Kolar. Also, I tried linking this guy to victims 1, 2, and 3, but no go. How did you get the name Vaklav Kolar? I read Claire's report on the fifth victim. In it, she added a picture that was found in the victim's purse. On the picture, there was the victim, a girl, and a guy. The guy reminded me of someone. He's actually one of the people I interviewed for the fourth murder. He was her tutor at the university. 
I went back to read my own report, and it's the same guy. I'm sure of it. Any relationship between the fourth and fifth victims? As far as I can tell, they didn't know each other, but they had this guy in common. Maybe he deserves a second interview? Definitely. I'll go alone. He's seen you before, so it might make things go smoother, make him less nervous. Hey, so what happened downstairs? We think the killer broke into the morgue and left us a picture of the next victim. You're kidding, right? I kid you not. A bold SOB, I'll give him that. You should go down and take a look at the picture. Claire needs to do a few tests on it and send it off to the labs. Do you think it's safe to go down there? Sure it is. Okay, I'll go have a look. Okay, and I'll give Kolar a visit. I sent the address to your 4x4's NAVCOM. If I have the chance, I'll go interview the latest victim's friends. Maybe I can talk to the other girl on the photo. Good idea. Who is it? Agent McPherson, FBI. I have a few questions I'd like to ask you, if you have the time. I have time for the pretty agent. May I come in? Sure. Geez, sorry I asked. What? Oh, nothing. Just thinking out loud. Oh, okay. Did you know a Natalie Kenworth? Yes, I did. So I imagine you also know that she was murdered about a month ago. Yes, and I already talked to a police officer about her. Yeah, I know, but I would appreciate if you could remind me. How did you know her? Friend? Just a classmate? Were you intimate? I was her tutor. She was studying in criminology, and I was helping her with some of her classes. She came here often. Do you know Cynthia Woods? Cynthia Woods? No, I don't think so. Are you sure? Maybe a photo would help. Oh, yes. I have seen her before. She's my neighbor's friend. I saw her at a party. That picture was taken there. A student in criminology, huh? Did you ever get Professor Pratt? No, but I know him. I've had several conversations about weird unsolved cases. So you're not close to Cynthia? No, she's more my neighbor's friend. I think I saw her twice in all, at the party and once in the hallway. Uh, why? She was found brutally murdered in an abandoned apartment building. You don't think that... Hey, I'm always in here working on my thesis. I never go out. I went to Mia's party because she invited me. I think she invited me so I wouldn't complain about the noise. Mia's the other girl in the picture? Yes, she's my neighbor. Your thesis, what's the subject? I'm doing it on a serial murder case called the Perlovka Ripper. It happened in the late 20s. Well, you don't say. Are you familiar with the case? You could say that, yes. Do you mind if I take a look at it? Sure, I'll even print you up a copy. Does he still have bad B.O.? B.O.? Body odor. In other words, he stinks. <laughs> yes, he still does. Okay, can I have the copy now? Sure, I'll be right back. Now's my chance. I should swipe something to get prints. This will do nicely. 
Here you are. Thanks a lot. I'll be sure to read it. I'd really appreciate your input if you ever have the time. Will do. You're not planning on leaving the country. No. Fine. Thanks for your cooperation and I'll keep in touch. Hello? Hey, it's me. What's up? Nothing much. I was just calling to say I was on my way to visit Victim 5's roommate. Maybe she can tell us more about Vaclav and the other girl in the picture. No need. I know who she is. She's Vaclav's neighbor. Actually, I just finished the interview. How did it go? He's harmless. Anyways, he doesn't fit the profile. But I did nick a little something with Prince. I'm taking it over to Claire for comparisons. Great idea. But we can't use it, though, if he checks out. I know. Call me if you get anything interesting out of the roommate. Will do. Bye. Bye. Hi, Claire. Hey. Can you check this bottle out for prints and compare them to the partials you got on victims 4 and 5? I don't think we'll hit anything, but I'm curious. Curiosity killed the cat. But a cat has nine lives. Let's stop the cliches before someone gets shot. Can you at least extract the prints for me? Once extracted, the computer can compare the partials. Sure. Remind me where the stuff is? The powder's upstairs on my desk near the plastifying machine, along with the brush and lifting tape. When you're done, just give me the print and I'll handle the rest down here. Okay, I'll be right back. This is grey powder, useful for finding latent prints. I can't just use the brush. I can't just use the brush. I can't use that here. This will do nicely for prints.
I'm all done with the prints. I'll have the results soon. Where are you off to now? Back to my dad's. I've got some reading to do. Well, okay. I'll call you if I get something. Okay, thanks a lot. Hey, sweetheart. Hi, Dad. When do you think you can do those cookies? Oh, geez. Sorry, Dad, I forgot. I have time now. Oh, it's okay. It's not a problem, Dad. A promise is a promise. This tastes right. Dad, the cookies are in the oven. Okay, a great combo. A shot of ice cold vodka, a glass of good red wine while dipping in the tub. I'll get to that later.
kid was badly scarred. The killer stabbed her seven times before she finally escaped to the streets. Odakar's boy Roman found her and brought her here. She's only 16, for God's sake. I promised her that I'd help her in any way I could if she would help me find the killer. So she opened up and told me her story. Can I keep this? Yes. I'm Gustav McPherson. I'm a private eye hired to help find and arrest the person who attacked you. I'm Vladana Tominova. I haven't said that in a long time. I'm usually just Vladana. Do you feel up to a few questions? I can always come back later. No, that's okay. You can ask me questions if you wish, but I'm afraid I won't be much help. Besides the sketch you gave me, can you describe your attacker with a, a little more detail? The top hat was black, and so was his cloak. The mask was silver white. It had motifs on it, but nothing I can describe accurately. When were you attacked? About two months ago. Where did it happen? It happened near the park. I was coming back from Mark's studio, and... Take your time. It was very foggy that evening. I heard someone walking in front of me. I could hear his footsteps getting closer and closer. I stopped when I suddenly saw a silhouette appear behind the fog. A man in a top hat wearing a dark cloak was standing in front of me. I froze. I couldn't move. I was absolutely terrified. What happened next? He approached slowly. I noticed that he was wearing a mask when he walked out of the fog. He looked like death itself. I hadn't noticed how close he had come to me. He took a swift swing at me. As he did, I let out a scream. At first I thought he had missed me, but then I noticed the metallic taste in my mouth. I put my hand to my face and looked at it. It was full of blood. Then I felt a cold sensation in my chest, followed by a sharp pain. Then another. Then another. I screamed what seemed to be my last breath. I fainted after that. I woke up in here. He'd stabbed me over and over. It's a miracle I'm still alive. How did you end up here in this joint? Roman found me. He was the one who scared off the killer. He heard me screaming, so he ran in the direction of the commotion. I don't know much about that. You should ask him. You mentioned earlier that you left Mark's place the night you were attacked. Who's Mark? Mark is a local artist. Most of the girls know him. I think he's painted all of us at least once. Was Mark acting strange that night, or was it business as usual? Everything was fine until Inspector Skalnik showed up. Inspector Skalnik talked to Mark. What did they talk about? I didn't really pay attention to what they were saying, but they were arguing about something. When Skalnik left, Mark told me to get dressed and leave. He told me he wasn't feeling well enough to continue. Was he angry? He was, but he made a good effort not to show it. So I left quietly without saying a word besides good night. In general, Mark was always nice. Yes, always cordial, very polite and well-behaved. He would give us double what we charge a client for the time we spent posing. It was a lot better work, let me tell you. I only posed for him once, and I wish I could do it again. Where can I find Mark? His studio is in front of the canal near the old wall. Well, thanks for answering my pesky questions. You're welcome. Take care of yourself, Ledena. And you be careful, too. Thanks, I will. Hi, Peter. Hi! Seems you got away from raw meat. 
Do you scare your new friends like that all the time? I'm sorry for what happened. The chain doesn't usually break. It was funny to see your face, though. <laughs> I always do the same gag to the new guys. What do you do for Otakar besides roughing people up? I hurt people that Otakar doesn't like, like I did to you. Y yes, well, that's what I meant. Besides hurting people, what do you do for them? No besides, I just hurt them. You're not very quick. <laughs> but you make me laugh. <laughs> okay, I guess that's my cue, Peter. I'll leave you to your hurting people. But I think you should cut down on the raw meat gag. I need a new pair of shorts. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I have to fix the chain. Hell, hello? Hello? Yes? Sorry about this. I knocked and the door opened, so I came in. That's quite all right. And you are? I'm Gus McPherson. I'm a private detective hired to help out with the local murders. Really? A genuine private dick, and I can tell by your accent you're American, too. This adds so much to the authenticity of the stereotype. The name is Mark Ackerman. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Are you British? No, I'm a Yank, just like you are. The accent is due to living in England throughout most of my childhood. You see, Daddy is an ambassador. I sort of picked it up along the way. I hardly notice it anymore. Mark? Qui est? Stay in your position, Napolina, please. Do you have time for a few questions? For just a few, yes, of course. It's sort of exciting, this private detective stuff. This was a while back, but do you remember when Inspector Skalnik came here to talk to you? Actually, according to rumor, you had an argument with him. Is that correct? Yes, it is. And do you mind telling me what it was about? Not at all. He accused me of being, as you put it so eloquently earlier, the local problem. He accused you of being the killer. Yes, can you believe the gall? I mean, really, me, a killer. It's totally preposterous. Did he elaborate on his theory? Not really. He only confronted me. He didn't present any proof or real evidence to support his allegations. I'm afraid you'll have to ask him about his little hypothesis. I'm sorry, but I have to ask this. Did you ever employ these women other than for modeling? I was always professional, Mr. McPherson. I never touched those women. Again, I apologize, but I have to ask these types of questions. It's quite all right, I understand. Mark! J'en ai marre! Well, I believe that's my cue. Yes, indeed. I must get back to work before... Well, before... Yes, I know. Thanks for answering my questions. Can I come back later, maybe when you're less busy? Certainly. As I mentioned before, your best bet is to talk to Inspector Skalnik. Well, again, my thanks. You're quite welcome. And good luck.
Hey, friend. Mr. McPherson, what can I do for you? I'd like to talk to your boss. Is he in now? As a matter of fact, he is. Are you gonna pester him with annoying questions? How'd you know? A oh, wild guess. Go right in, my friend. It's up the stairs at the end of the hall to your right. Thanks. Inspector Skalnik? If it isn't the knight in shining armor. <laughs> you son of a... What do you want, McPherson? I was on my way out. I'd like to ask you about Mark, the local artist. What about him? Well, I thought I remember you saying that you had no suspects related to these crimes. And this charming gentleman says otherwise. What did he say exactly? He said that you accused him of the crimes. May I ask why? Yes, I considered him a suspect. Wouldn't you? It doesn't matter what I think. That's all the time I have for you. Fine. Can you at least lend me the files on the other victims? No, McPherson. Why not? I just want to consult them. Hey, I thought we were working to... No, we are not. I work for the mayor, not the whores. Well, now, it seems we work for the same kind of people, except my clients have character and honesty. This concludes our conversation. I have business elsewhere. Hey, Kaz, I need another favor. What can I do? I need to get some files from Skalnik's office. Can you let me in? I'm afraid I can't do that, my friend. That could mean my job. Ah, oh, come on. For old time's sake. No, really. I can't help you. But maybe... Maybe the workers on the side of the building can help you? All right. Thanks for the tip. Have a nice evening. to manage a way up. I have to manage a way up.
You all right? Yes, I'm fine. Didn't we talk about you staying at home safely, behind a bolted door? Yes, we did, but we also talked about me going to see the doctor. Ah, uh, yes, I remember that. So what did the doc say? Did he find the problem? Well, yes, he did. So, what's wrong? Can I ask you a very serious question? Okay, now I'm worried. What is it? How serious are we? How serious? Well, uh, why do you ask? Just answer the question. I'm sorry, Ida, but where is this going? Do you love me? Yes, of course I love you. Actually, love is too small a word. I lure you, I love you, I lobe you. <laughs> I'm pregnant. Really? Yes, really. That's why I've been sick for the last couple of weeks. I see. What do you want to do? Well, there's only one thing we can do. Which is? Let's get married. Really? L let's do it in New York. I have some friends and family that can help us get started. Oh, Gus, you're wonderful. see anything unusual. Looks like the benches have been changed. Now where are the old ones? see anything unusual. That bath was empty at the time. This message was carved recently. Someone is leaving breadcrumbs. Hey, Peter. Hello, Gustav. I like your name. It reminds me of my father. Oh, your father's name was Gustav? No, Michael. I can see why you would think that. Anyways, I need to ask you a question. Did you guys ever receive some old public benches? Hmm. Yeah, we did. They're right over here. There you are! Thank you, my very large friend. 
<laughs> you make me laugh! And it's a good thing I do. I'd hate to be on your bad side. Actually, I know what that's like. Hello again. Hello, Mr. McPherson. Can you help me out with something? Of course. I want you to take a look at this picture. Do you remember what happened that day? Yes, I remember. How can I forget it? I'm the one who found Katarina. Inspector Skelnick asked me a few questions. At that particular time, was there something out of the ordinary? Something you might have seen that struck you as odd? Or maybe something you know about the area that no one else does? Well, the only thing I saw that seemed out of place is that Inspector Skalnik threw something into the sewers. Did you see what it was? No. He turned his back and he let something drop. I saw it fall between his legs. It was something shiny because it caught my eye. Well, thanks a lot for your help. You're welcome. Strange. Someone locked this recently. That lock is brand new. Gustav! Yes? I'm really worried for Apollina. Uh, don't worry. She's with Mark, the painter. I know, but she should have been back by now. It never takes that long to model. You've modeled for him before? Yes, I did, and I didn't like it very much. Why? Well, I don't like him too much. Was he mean to you? No, actually, quite the contrary. He was always nice. <laughs> too nice. It just gives me the creeps. Anyway, can you do me a favor? Sure. Can you just go and look at Mark's studio? Okay, I'll have a look. And if Apollina's there, I say... That Milena wants to talk to you. I'll do as you wish. Thank you. Strange. No one's there. I think I'll let myself in.
I don't recognize the one on the left, but I certainly recognize the one on the right. Eda never told me she posed for him. The one on the left reminds me of Francisca. On the right side, I haven't a clue. Vladan on the left, and he finished Apollina. The paint is still drying. Blood. Recent, too. Mr. Ackerman, your indiscretions are becoming too expensive to cover up. Your father is resigning as ambassador. You will be returning to America with him shortly. Get your affairs in order. Bell, U.S. Embassy. So, any news? I went inside and there was no one there. Did you find anything? No, but I definitely want a word with Skalnik. Miss Milena, have a pleasant evening. I'd stay off the streets if I were you. Tell me what you found. I found nothing. Stop worrying. wishes you good luck in finding the murder. I think that concludes our agreement. Farewell, Inspector. My thanks to the Ambassador. And as far as our murderer is concerned, well, let's just say I have the perfect man to take the fall. Why, that son of a bitch. I never imagined this. I mean, this isn't the image I had of your room. Miller, what the hell are you doing here? I imagined something more along the lines of Hellraiser. Christ, Miller. Sorry, I'm in shock here. I came because the prints on the bottle and the partials match at a 99% probability. Kolar seems to be our best bet. Really? Yes, and I thought you'd want to pick him up. Okay, I'll meet you over there. Wait for me before taking action. Of course I will.
Hey, Miller. Hey. Hey, Vaclav, we need to talk to you. The cute agent is back. What's the cute agent thing? Shh. Hey, listen. Did you hear that? What? It's probably a movie. No, I don't think so. Actually, I think it's from the movie Clockwork Nightmare. No way. This is for real. Ah, come on. It's called Suspicion of an Officer. Oh man, Victoria. Call Tate. Oh, crap. I will. Later. Oh my god, Miller. You were like, absolutely right. It's like a movie. You're not funny. We could get into serious trouble. Christ, Miller. Lighten up. Let's check out his room. See? I was right. It is Clockwork Nightmare. This guy is twisted. Oh, stop it. Did you see the pictures on the wall? Yeah, so? Gore films, crime scene photos, porno. Need I say more? You just described three quarters of adolescent America. He's harmless. We're here to ask about the prince. We aren't here for character assassination. We'll leave that part to the lawyers. Hey. We need an officer to guard a door. Various pictures of serial killer victims. Various pictures of serial killer victims. I didn't know they ever made a sequel to Clockwork Nightmare. Various articles on serial killers. I think these dirty clothes have melded together to form a new life form. Now, I've seen some pretty gross stuff during my career, but a pair of his underwear just took the number one spot. Oh, look, it's the award winners. Bundy, Gassy, Berkowitz, Ramirez, Fish, Ridgeway, and DeSalvo. I bet if I sprayed Luminol all over the bed, I'd need sunglasses just to look at it. What's going on? Police business, miss. Ouch. Hello. You must be Mia, right? Yes, and you seem to have me at a disadvantage. I'm Agent McPherson, and this is Detective Miller. You wouldn't happen to know where Vaclav might be. Actually, yes, I do. I saw him at work. He was getting a massage or taking a hot bath, whichever. Where do you work? Where do you work? Here's my card. The address is on the back. Can you check it out? I'll meet you over there. Sure. Better than being ignored. Do you mind if I ask what you do there? Not at all. Actually, I could show you if you'd like, because I can see all that tension in your shoulders and neck. My apartment is just a few steps away. Thanks for the offer, but I have to decline. I really need to talk to your friend, Vaclav. Friend? Vaclav is a nice guy, but he's no friend. He's a neighbor at best. Sorry to interrupt the flow of your questioning, but can I be totally blunt here? Uh, I'm not sure I want you to, but go right ahead. Are you spoken for? 
Not quite what I expected, but then again, it could have been worse. To answer the question, yes, I'm spoken for. Oh, how unfortunate. I don't have much time to chit-chat now, but I will contact you later. I'd like to ask you a few more questions. Any time. My offer still stands if you ever change your mind. I'll be in touch. You call Ms. McPherson? Yes, I need you to guard the door in case Vaclav Kolar shows up here. Description? About 5'8", black hair, glasses, and he has a scar on his face. Okay, I'll call in if he shows up. All right. Thanks, Tate. I think I might have screwed up. You didn't try your tough guy routine, did you? I might have, yes. What happened? I only said that I needed to talk to one of the clients. He wouldn't let me in, so I asked him again, this time with some subtle encouragement. You mean you flashed your badge in his face, right? That pretty much sums it up, yeah. Then what? He asked for a warrant, so I'm screwed. No way we can find a judge at this time of the night and so close to the holidays. Correction, we are screwed. But wait, I might have an idea. Stay here in case I miss Backlab. You know what he looks like? Yeah. Wait, what are you up to? Just watch the door, I'll be right back. baby, but I need to see your pass. I don't have my pass. I was wondering if you could let me in anyways. Then y'all ain't going in. Y'all must be the new girl. It always be the same old motherfucking routine. Listen, yo, don't forget your pass. Yo, forget it, yo, don't work. You really can't bend the rules just for tonight? Yo, listen up, mama. A rule is a rule. It be my ass if I let y'all in. I thought they'd brief you. They did, it's just I live really far and it costs me a fortune in cab fare. So take a cab, they pay for it. I'm sure it's not a problem. How would it look to you if you start someplace and you're already asking for money? It doesn't make me look good. Yeah, I see your point, but I still can't let y'all in. How many girls besides me? Four. Are you sure they brief you? Yes, they did. Do you like working here? I mean, how is it? Yeah, I like working here. It's not bad at all. Better than where I used to work. I know about my end of things, but on your end, I have to say, y'all should all be asking one of the other girls. Well, I gotta head back and get that pass. Sorry about that, but I really got no choice. I understand. Your idea didn't work, I gather. Yes and no. I have to see Mia and try to convince her to give me her pass. Can you stay here and watch the place in case Kolar decides to split? Sure. Can you get me some milk bones while you're at it?
Oh. Hi. Hi, Mia. You had a change of heart? Sort of. I need a favor. Even better. Come on in. Hello? Yes, okay. I'll be right down. I have to go downstairs for a second. Make yourself at home. But Mia, all I need is... I won't be long, promise. I wonder where that was taken. Hey, this looks like the girl whose photo we found in the body. Mia, who is this? Oh, that's Steph. Oh, shit. I was supposed to meet her to do another portrait of her. Where were you going to meet her? Why? What's wrong? Just tell me where. A at my studio, 4455 Beauregard. Okay, I know the place. Please, Vic, what's going on? No time to explain. Just stay here. Don't move. Hey, Richard. Hi, honey. Ah, have you finally come to see the exhibition? No, not really. I need you to open the gate outside. I have to get into one of the studios. Sure, but why? I finally have a lead in my case. And it's in one of my studios? <laughs> What's going on? Yes, well, it's a person who might know the killer and she's inside. I really need to talk to her. Okay, let's go. I would have appreciated you taking an interest in my work. Oh my god. Vic. Shit. Oh my god. No. Mia! Wait! Shit. I have to stay here to secure the scene. Call the police and go find Mia. Okay. The rose is under the lift. I can't reach it. I'm really sorry, Stephanie. I should have taken that shot. Damn it!
It's written, a sinner's pardon. I'm really sorry, Stephanie. I should have taken that shot. Damn it! It's a hook, probably to lower down crates and whatnot. Browning. Who? Why wasn't I informed? Don't bother, I'll tell her. Okay. Agent McPherson, Miller has a Vaclav Kolar in for questioning. Why wasn't I informed of this suspect? Because I really don't think he's relevant to the investigation. Well, your partner seems to think otherwise. Anyway, he's waiting for you at the office. Hey, sweetie. Busy now, but come back later. I'll have more for you. Agent McPherson, your partner is waiting for you. Yo, Miss McPherson. Y'all don't let that asshole Browning get to you. Hey, Victoria, over here. He's in there now. What happened? A new murder? Hi, Vaclav. I believe you've met Detective Miller? Yes. Uh, uh, am I in trouble or something? Well, sort of, yeah. I've done nothing wrong. Can you tell me where you were three nights ago? Yes, I was probably working on my thesis. Probably? I assume because that's all I do, or tutor students to make ends meet. That's how you met Natalie? Yes, I was her tutor at the university, and that's all. Let me show you a picture of Natalie. Did you do that to her, Vaclav? No, I didn't do anything to her. It's different when you know the person, isn't it? Maybe you should reconsider how you decorate your room. Tell me how you met Natalie. Did you drown her before eviscerating her? I didn't do that to her! 
So how did you meet her? I saw her ad on the school bulletin board. What about Cynthia? How did you meet her? You killed Cynthia the same way you killed Natalie, huh? I told you I met her at Mia's party. Then how come we have partial prints at Natalie's crime scene and Cynthia's crime scene that match your prints at a 99% probability? Did Cynthia resist? Is that why you beat her up so bad? I didn't do anything to her! I get why Natalie would have parcels of you, but Cynthia? Something doesn't fit. You hired her, right? What? Relax, Vaclav. I just want to know what happened between you two. Oh. <laughs> yes, I did. I mean, yes, I hired her. Cynthia worked at the same place where you were picked up tonight, right? Yes. Mia and Cynthia worked there, but they didn't work the baths or do massages. What did they do? They worked in a special club. Only certain members have access to another room. What is this place? A brothel? I don't know. I never went, but I know that I saw some important people. That's enough. You're free to go, Mr. Cola. What the fuck was that? What was that, Detective Miller? Why are we letting him go? On what grounds? He's definitely not a suspect. The prints are a match, but they're circumstantial evidence. I'm out of here. Wait, Agent McPherson. No, you wait a goddamn minute, Browning. Prints are not circumstantial evidence, you idiot! It's a paper cutter.
plastifier. This little machine can be very practical. Not a good idea. He won't let me in unless I show him a pass. The title is Perfect Love. This one's called For Better or For Worse. The title is Dark Wedding. The painting is called Reminder. It says, I am the mistress of pain. Give me what I desire most. It says, I am the queen of secrets. Give me what I desire most.
It says, I am Lady Temptation. Give me what I desire most. It says, I am the Baroness of Blood. Give me what I desire most. Mia, do you know how the statues work? You need to use a specific object for each statue. Mine is the apple. One half is in the room with the statues, and the other is at my apartment. Can I have the key to your apartment, please? Sure. What's up? The killer left a photo of Mia on Stephanie's body. A photo of Stephanie was found on Cynthia. You see what I'm getting at? Yes. I won't let her out of my sight. Thanks. The door is locked. We have major tongue action. Nice bike. Thank you. 
It looks like something fits over her face, but what? Now that's a big snake. Her mouth is open now. There's a hole at the center of her hand. I must find a way to get to that book. And this is the living room. Note the extremely sadistic looking scorpion like chair. I need a key. Forget it, it won't work. Now that's a nice bed. A 
keyhole. I need a key. Mark Ackerman? Mark Ackerman! It's Ackerman! So I was to take the fall for this, huh? You little son of a bitch. So you covered his tracks for money, huh? You know how many died for your greed, you bastard? Huh? Do you? I'll make sure you go down. Oh yeah. You have the right to a phone call. Little smart ass punk. Gus. Hey, friend. What's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. Ah, uh, there's been another murder. Where's the body? It's at the old lavatory. But you can't get there. The bridge that went there has been out for years. Listen, this is probably going to be the last time I ask you this, but can you do me a favor? Why, well, I don't have the time right now. Time is the favor. Don't warn Skalnik right away. Just give me a head start. Can you do that for me? Okay, five minutes. No more, no less. Great. You take care of yourself. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye? Oh, oh, yeah. Goodbye. I don't really want to get wet that badly. Maybe there's a way of draining the reservoir. Another ring. Weird. This one looks like it was made just recently.
The door is locked. It doesn't look like it'll work.
this must be the key to this door. It won't budge. Hmm. This must be the key to this door. It won't budge. Hmm. This must be the key to this door. It won't budge. Hmm. It doesn't look like it'll work. It doesn't look like it'll work. This must be the key to this door. It won't budge. Hmm.
Wake up. Wake up, Alice. Look, I'm glad you followed the breadcrumbs, Mr. McPherson. I wanted you to witness my latest masterpiece. Wake up, dear. I wouldn't want you to miss the pain. This painting is called Death Do Us Part. The woman in this painting appears to utterly disregard the suffering of the man kneeling on the ground beside her. Again, we see the recurrence of a dark tunnel, with an ominous figure lurking in the shadows. It seems as though Ackerman is attempting to recreate a moment in his childhood with undertones of rape and suffering. Note the position of the man in this painting. He is vulnerable, weak, and exposed. Is this how Ackerman himself felt at the time? Cleansing of a soul. For the first time in Ackerman's work, a woman is depicted in a seductive manner. She floats on the canvas, her red cloak rippling in the wind, in contrast to the dead calm of the background. Red, representing passion and seduction, dominates the foreground, but is surrounded by ominous tones of dark purples, grays, and blacks the colors of death. The woman's eyes are missing, perhaps representing increasing confusion and anger towards the women in his life. Bridge over troubled water. The woman in the foreground seems troubled and stares directly at us, seemingly unaware of the turmoil surrounding her. The vast and tumultuous sky, usually representative of freedom and openness, instead feels oppressive and looms eerily over the landscape. Is this Mark trying to get back at his mother? This painting is called Streets of Prague. Ackerman only lived in Prague for a few years. We can see the recurrence of a dark alleyway. Look at the colors in this painting. It's almost as if the walls are bruised and battered. Clearly Ackerman had a very negative view of the city. A sinner's pardon. The woman depicted here is clearly in a vulnerable and submissive position. She clutches herself as she struggles to achieve forgiveness. Perhaps one might see this as Ackerman's vision of how his mother should have asked for forgiveness for failing to protect him. The first one is called Abandoned. To the right, you can see a woman lying down, drunk, seemingly unaware of her surroundings. In the center of the picture are two eyes, eerily cutting through the darkness. We know that Mark Ackerman was abused by his father and felt that his mother, who knew what was happening, stayed passive and let the abuse continue. This is mirrored in the painting where the woman depicted seems unwilling to react to the approaching danger. This one is called The Pupil. The title suggests that Mark connected with the subject of this painting. Although trapped in his own prison, Ackerman was able to find escape through his pupil represented by the light reflecting through the window onto the subject. He is using this man to escape from his own prison. The title is Mindless. This man is literally mindless. Note the stitches on his forehead where he was presumably lobotomized. This represents Mark's worst nightmare, being trapped in a prison of both body and mind. Although standing in a corner surrounded by darkness, an open window sheds light onto the scene. In a cruel irony, however, the subject is unaware of this window to freedom and remains a prisoner. Ah, Beatrice. The woman depicted here, a nurse, seems to represent Mark's ideal woman, 
and perhaps she was. Attentive, loving, and seductive, she is surrounded by angelic hues of white. Her skin tone is rich and alive, in contrast to his earlier works. This one is called Dr. Hyde, and is the first in his L.A. series. We know that Ackerman was committed to a mental hospital in the 30s. The man in this painting represents Mark's psychiatrist. It is a caricature of a dishonest man, whose gaze is masked behind thick glasses. The painting has an air of condescension. Look at his smile. He looks like the village idiot. It is obvious that Mark had no respect or admiration for this man. This painting is called Moonshine Traffic, his second painting in Chicago. One senses that Mark is comfortable here. The sun is rising, pushing out the darkness. Notice the warm oranges, yellows, and reds. Perhaps Mark is finally at peace and feels at home in Chicago. Uh, this one here is called Disturbed Sanctuary and is the first in his Chicago series. One of the unusual aspects of this painting is the perspective from which it is created. One feels as though Ackerman is an unwanted guest in the room, almost hiding behind the curtain. The woman shown in this painting appears blissfully unaware of him or the darkness that surrounds her sanctuary of light. Mia, do you feel up for a few questions? Sure. Can you tell me, is this you in the picture? Yes, it is. Where and when was it taken? I don't remember anyone taking a picture of me at that party. It was a rave in an abandoned warehouse somewhere. It was a few weeks ago. Who were you with? I, I was with... Sorry, Mia. Stephanie was with you. Yes. How did you meet Stephanie? I met her at work. So you, Cynthia, and Stephanie worked at the club? Yes. Who's the fourth girl? I don't know her real name. She was known as Queen of Secrets. The rule was never to give our real names to the clients or to the staff. But me, Steph, and Cynthia didn't respect the rule. We often partied. We got pretty close. But she respected the rule, and never mixed with us. You were Lady Temptation. Yes, and Steph was Baroness of Blood, and Cynthia, Mistress of Pain. What went on at the club? Well, Queen of Secrets would host the clients in the room with four statues. The clients would change their clothes. Change their clothes? Yes. They would put on Victorian-style cloaks with top hats and... They would wear masks. Masks? Yes, it was a rule never to know their true identity. These men were probably rich and powerful. It was to prevent us girls from blackmailing the clients. Plus, it heightened their experience with all the role-playing possibilities. It put them at ease to know that we didn't know them. The money was absolutely insane. Thanks, Mia. I want you to stay with Richard for a while, because I might have more questions for you. Is that all right with you? It's no problem. Do you have any more information about Mark Ackerman? All I have is a book that the Department of Fine Arts printed. May I have a copy? Sure, honey. It's on the presentation stand in the center of the exhibition. Why the sudden interest? It has something to do with my case. What? In what way? The killer left two messages at two of the crime scenes. Disturbed Sanctuary and a sinner's pardon were written on the walls. I didn't know what they meant until now. You mean the killer knows about Mark Ackerman? Yes. That seems unlikely. Ackerman's pretty much unknown. 
This is the first time he's going to be exposed to the public. That's why you have to give me a list of all the people who sold you the paintings and a list of the people from the Fine Arts Department who are involved in this project. Can you do that for me? Sure, but it'll take time. Thanks. See you later. Okay, I'll go work on that list. Claire? What are you doing here? Why do I have the feeling I just caught you with your hand in the cookie jar? I just came up here to get some blank report sheets. I'm all out downstairs, and there you are. Claire, what's your level of clearance? Level two. Oh no. Please don't tell me you were trying to find files using my name. Oh, I found them. I just can't access them. It's level four clearance only. Oh, I'd love to read them. Don't tell me you have a lead. Actually, I might have one, yes, but I won't go into details just yet. I've been taught to never give any details before you have all the facts. Oh, really? Who's the idiot that taught you that? You did at Quantico. Remember? Yes, I remember. Anyways, I really need to get my hands on those files. Clearance 4, huh? I know one person who has that level of clearance, Todd. We never had this conversation, and I certainly never said that you could try the computer in his office instead of trying to get me in trouble. Victoria? Uh-oh. You never call me Victoria unless it's serious. You usually cut corners, I know, but why do something that might actually cost you your job? Because I feel responsible for Stephanie's death. Okay, now how is that possible? When I chased our murderer on the rooftop, I had a chance to take him out and I didn't. Why? Did you freeze? I know that happens sometimes, even to the best. I'm sorry, but that sounded like a male impotent speech. Victoria, I'm being serious. I froze, sort of. I was hanging over the ledge. Victoria, I can't believe we're having this conversation. That's not a shot, and you know it. How is your falling to your death any good for the case? Thanks for the tip. Oh, and we never had this conversation. We better not have had this conversation. Never mind. Well, good luck, sweetie. And when you get the final facts, make sure you think of me and share. Of course I will. Thanks for being you. need those keys. I have to find a way to distract him. Hey, do you think I could borrow those keys? Over my dead body, senorita! That won't work. I don't need that.
I'm sorry, but I made a terrible mess at the coffee machine. Oh, that machine is so stupid! Boss's office. It's locked, of course. I don't need that. Damn, it's password locked. I need to go directly to the archives downstairs. It's locked. It's a print scanner. I need one of Todd's prints. That won't work. I can't just use the brush. I don't need more powder. That won't work. I can't just use the brush. That won't work. I can't use that here. This will do nicely for prints. It's a print scanner. I need one of Todd's prints. Door's locked. It leads to the archives room security corridor. The security panel for this door must be on the other side. This door leads to the bomb squad room. It's electronically locked. Maybe if I jolt the circuits it will open. Now I need something that could send an electric current to jolt the door open. Boop. 
I'm not taking these off with my nails. They're press-ons. I can only use one at a time. Ah, oh, these things are awesome. These guys are made to deactivate bombs. No way I'll walk blindly through a field of deadly lasers.
Those documents my grandfather stole. I wonder if we have them somewhere. McPherson! McPherson, you have a lot of explaining to do! So what now, Browning? Don't bullshit me, McPherson. You know you're not allowed down here. Listen, I'm actually getting things done as opposed to sitting on my ass and waiting for something to happen. Well, that's your job. It's to profile the killer. To try and guess his next move, not chasing murderers in dark alleys with a 4x4. You know, I think you've seen too many movies. Tell me something. Who's gonna pay for all the equipment you damage down here? Oh, for fuck's sakes, just bill me, okay? I have no choice now but to suspend you. You'll have to justify your actions in front of the disciplinary committee. Actually, don't bother. I quit. Oh, that's just what I expected from you. A quitter. You're nothing but a little rich girl who, when she doesn't get things her way, just quits. Fuck you, Browning. You don't know me. Maybe, but I know you're not getting away with this. I think I am, or a certain list of names of senators and high officials will go public. A list of names belonging to a certain S and M club? Hey, wasn't your name on that list too? How dare you! Just stay clear of me, Browning, or the press will have a field day. Hey, are you married? You little bitch! That's little rich bitch to you, Browning. There's a lump here. I need something sharp to cut through, but I don't want to damage the painting. I thought he was going to change these chairs. Each time I sit in one, it doesn't feel like I'm eating, but ruling a small country. Okay, a great combo. A shot of ice-cold vodka, a glass of good red wine while dipping in the tub. <sighs> I'll get to that later. Okay, a great combo. A shot of ice-cold vodka, a glass of good red wine while dipping in the tub. <sighs> I'll get to that later.
One of my grandfather's old paintings. It's from when he was in Paris, I think. One of my grandfather's old paintings. It's from when he was in Paris, I think. I was living a nightmare. Edith's suffering had just ended, and mine was only beginning. I took to the streets, blinded by sorrow. Why couldn't I protect her? What if I hadn't taken the case? But Milena's sweet voice brought me back to reason. She suggested we hide somewhere since the police were sure to be looking for me. Vladana's place was the safest spot, but we couldn't stay for long. We all had our reasons for leaving Prague. As for me, I wanted to get back at the bastard. We got out of the city on a small boat, and a couple of Roman's friends set us up with a ride to another town. From there, we took a train to Le Havre, France. We bought four tickets for New York City. America wasn't the country I had left behind. Poverty was at an all-time high, and the economy at an all-time low. We managed to get in through some of my connections. Then I got this in the mail. One article was about a series of murders in Chicago that were the same as the ones in Prague. I contacted Chicago authorities, but they wanted more proof. Even so, it was enough for them to confront Herbert Ackerman. He countered with an offer they couldn't refuse. Money, lots of it. Ackerman's name was safe, but they forced him to commit Mark to an institution. Fearing blame for the murders, I crept into the offices and stole any documents that might protect me. I found a full confession signed by Ackerman telling the story of his son. That bastard is in the loony bin where he deserves to be. I heard that they moved out west. Some years after, a cop from L.A. contacted me about a case. Strange murders of prostitutes, badly mutilated. I sent him what I could, but I told him I wasn't going near it. I wasn't going to sacrifice the one I loved again. Milena and I got married and settled down in Chicago. I went back to the ordinary missing persons and cheating husband cases. And gladly, too. Hello? Hi, sweetie, it's me. Hey, what's up? I answered the phone at your desk because the damn thing kept ringing. Anyways, this guy named Vaclav something was a little hysterical. He said that he heard a scream and some noises coming from his neighbor's apartment. I figured it might be important or you might know what he was talking about. Yes, I do, thanks. I'll check it out. Oh, did you find anything in the files you were looking to access? Yes, but not as breathtakingly revealing as I'd anticipated. But it's given me a new lead. I think I'm going to L.A. L.A.? Why L.A.? It'd be too long to explain, but I'll fill you in as soon as I get the chance. Before you leave, I hope. I'll try. Anyways, I gotta see what's wrong over at the campus. Okay, sweetie. You be careful. I always am. Bye. Bye. It sounds like Dad's catching some Z's.
Victoria McPherson. I need assistance. Yes, ma'am. Please give me the address and location. I'm at the university. I'm. This is worse than a hangover. Mia's not there, which means that she might still be alive. Kolar didn't make it. Hey, that's Mia's purse. Now this might come in handy. Where did he take Mia? Think, Vic. Think! The messages he leaves behind. Of course, the paintings! I've got to go save Mia. This one was already copied by the killer. It was the fourth victim, Natalie Kenworth. She was found in the sewers. Grandad was probably right. Maybe Ackerman had someone on the outside. That's what I'm going to find out when I go over there. Another one from the L.A. series. Nothing I can see in it that'd lead me anywhere in Chicago. Probably from the Mental Institute in L.A. One of Ackerman's L.A. series. Probably, like Richard said, that was Mark's doctor. Another one from the Chicago series. That's probably in the harbor. Disturbed Sanctuary. We've seen this one already. Cynthia Woods, our fifth victim. That's Ackerman's masterpiece, as he once said to my granddad. I don't think our killer has gone as far in his sick, twisted game yet. I recognize the murdered Apollina. The killer hasn't used this portrait. This red drape was floating in the water next to her. 
That must be the Vltava River. This is a murder portrait and our killer hasn't used it yet. That must be the Charles Bridge. I don't think our killer took a plane ride to Prague. The killer depicted this painting already. Poor Stephanie. I can use Richard's computer to help me find the possible location. That's it. That's got to be it. Yes, I'm fine. Did they find the body? No, not yet. They're still dragging the riverbed and diving. Damn. I know how you feel. I want closure, too. I got my tickets for L.A. You still think you're gonna find answers over there? You got him, sweetie. It's over. Not for me. Claire, I'm gonna have to let you go. I'm gonna rest for a while. Okay, I'll drop by later and see how you're doing. Okay, bye. <laughs> 